Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and this is an all new video series from ExitAutomation on Selenium Java from basic to advanced. So this is the first series after quite a long time that I'm going to be talking about the Selenium with Java from complete ground up. And the reason why I have created this series is because I have heard from many students asking what is the best way to start automation testing and what are the things that we need to learn uh, from testing perspective as well as from the automation testing perspective and also where to get started with and what is the route that they need to take. Because I have almost 1000 plus uh, videos in my Zero Automation YouTube channel and I also have courses in Udemy. But every time while a new tester get into any of the courses uh, of mine in my YouTube channel as well as in Udemy, they always get a question is where to start because there are so many different videos that I have. So this series that you are seeing over here is going to be a series which is going to cover almost quite a lot of details uh, in terms of automation testing. And we are going to see from the complete ground up, like what testing is and uh, how to get started with testing and what is automation testing and what are the things that you need to know for testing and how uh, we are going to uh, understand a programming language and things of that nature. So that's what this whole course is all about. So let's get started with this course and you will learn quite a lot of things from this uh, particular video series. And I'm sure there are quite a lot of uh, questions that you have got as a beginner of the course. So hopefully I will cover everything in this particular series. So let's get started. Well, as I said, this video is all about an introduction to this whole course and what is this software testing is all about. So uh, to whom is this course for? That is the first question that you need to ask. Well, in that case, is this is for the absolute beginners course. So if you've been looking for something like a framework development uh, and if you're going to be talking about some microservices or event-driven systems, this course is not going to be delivering that at the start because this is just going to be from the complete ground up. And once we get along with this course to the advanced concept, you are going to see those concepts, of course, there. But uh, at least in this particular uh, video and for quite a lot of lectures, we are going to only talk about the basic stuff of Selenium. Because this course is designed in such a way that anyone with zero to no knowledge in software testing and automation testing uh, can get into software testing field, or at least understand how software testing works uh, from a complete ground up. That is the whole idea of this particular series. And as that said, this course is actually for the college graduate who are coming out from college and they're looking to learn about automation testing and software as a whole, like Java programming language, they can enroll this course, they can start learning this course. And fresh software engineers who have no idea uh, in the QA testing field uh, can also enroll this course because we are going to talk about testing concept as well quite a lot. As I told you before, I have got so many students asking where to get started with the testing field. This particular course is going to be helpful for them. Well, as I said, Welcome to the first step of your automation testing journey. And that's what we are going to be beginning in this particular course. So before we get into the automation testing itself, let's first understand what is this software testing is all about and what is manual testing and what is automation testing and what are some of the core testing concepts that we need to know uh, so that we can uh, shine in the testing field and also understand how we can do software testing. Well, Software testing is part of the bigger software development lifecycle or otherwise called as SDLC. So if you have learned in your college days about uh, SDLC, then you already know what I'm talking about. If not, SDLC, you can just think of it as a life cycle where software can be created from the start to the end until the software lands into a customer's hand. That's what is all about the SDLC. And software testing is part of the SDLC and it is one of the most fundamental component of the SDLC itself. Well, as that said, software testing helps you to verify and confirm the software application meets specified requirement and functions as the user needed it. So basically it is more like you are given a software in hand and if you expect the software to work 
in the fashion that you're looking for and it meets your need for example your upi application which you're going to be using for payment and if it works to do the payment then you have confirmed that that software is working for a payment op operation and similarly if you are working with uh, for instance a social networking application like whatsapp to send a message to a friend and if that works as expected then that confirms that it works as expected like sending the message in this case so that's what is software testing so basically software testing is going to help you to verify and confirm that the software application that you are using meets the specified requirement that is the most important thing and not only that software testing will also help you to detect the bugs in the early stage of the application development and this has got so many different analogy i mean if you are going to be using a software testing in certain process if you follow certain process uh, you may not find the software bugs in the early stage so there are many different approaches that you need to take in order for you to identify the bug in the early stage for instance shift left approach is one of the approach that you use to identify the software bugs in the early stage so don't worry about the shift left approach or anything like that for now because you are just getting into software testing this particular terminologies may be confusing for you but guess what these are going to be helpful for you while we get along this particular course and not only that software testing also ensures the quality and reliability of the software so this is one of the most key feature of a software testing because you as a test engineer who are pursuing for software testing you are the gatekeeper of the quality of the software so you ensure that every single time a software is going to be shipped to a customer's hand you test that before the software lands in the customer's hand so that is the that is the real proud for a software test engineer who does everything uh and take the responsibility and ownership of the software before it lands to the customer and making the customer's life easier that's what you as a software test engineer are going to be doing so that's the power of this uh, software testing itself well as it said let's talk about manual testing so manual testing is an art which i say uh, of the testing software by understanding the product requirement and business requirement the reason why i say manual testing is an art is because you're going to be doing quite a lot of engineering stuff inside the testing itself it's not just like you open an application swipe it up or scroll all the menus and click some buttons and then you're done with the testing but that's not testing is all about testing is more like how you actually put your entire effort and thinking and understanding of an application by reading the business requirement and product requirement and how the application works based on the technology it is developed and how you encounter any issues and how you identify them and report them is all coming under that umbrella of what is called as a manual testing so you as a test engineer are not only just using the application as an end user but you are going to be using the application beyond like an end, us end user you are thinking more than an end user and you are testing the application as if something goes wrong what is the best way that you can identify it before it even lands to the customer hand well as i said manual testing is an art of testing software by understanding the product requirement and business requirement and executing finely crafted test scenarios that you write in a manual fashion so that is what is all about the manual testing and using this testing technique and methodologies we not only find any issues but we also try to fine tune how the application can work and we can report those bugs in a in a jira or any bug tracking system so that the developers and the entire team will be on the same page based on what's been reported by a test engineer so that's all it's all about this manual testing and then what is this automation testing then well automation testing is going to be a bit of an opposite to what manual testing is because automation testing is an act of testing software by understanding once again the business requirement and the product requirement so you don't think that as a automation test engineer you don't really have to worry about the product requirement or the business requirement then if you think that is the way then it is completely wrong because you as an a test engineer regardless of you as a manual test engineer or a automation test engineer you definitely have to comply 
the role of uh, the quality engineer. So you are always the gatekeeper, regardless of you as a manual test engineer or automation test engineer. You are a quality engineer by nature. So you always have to go through the understanding of product requirement and business requirement. And then you will be creating and executing the automated testing scenarios using automated testing tools. So that is the only difference between the manual test engineer versus the automation test engineer. So manual test engineer will be crafting the scenarios, how the application has to be tested. In here, the automated test engineer will also do the exact same thing, but he will also be writing some codes in order to make sure that the test can be executed in an automated fashion, not by just always running it in a manual fashion. So that is the real power of the automation test versus the manual testing. And there are even more testing concepts that we need to understand. It's not just about the manual testing and automation testing. There are even different types of testing involved while we do software testing. Something like smoke testing, regression testing, black box testing, white box testing, performance testing, usability testing, user acceptance testing, and the last before user acceptance testing is the production validation testing. So these are uh, different types of testing we have while we do the software development. I mean, not only these, there are even more of them available, but I have just laid down some of the testing types for you to have a glance about. Well, the one that we are going to be talking about in this particular lecture, I mean, two of them that we will be talking about in this lecture is the smoke testing and the regression testing. So what is this uh, smoke testing? So smoke testing is basically, um, if you have already heard about it, uh, then this is going to be like a recap for you. If not, I can just tell you what smoke testing is all about. So smoke testing is a process to test the most critical function of a software application to work correctly once there is a new software build is released by a developer to QA engineer. And smoke testing will have fewer scenarios to test because it is going to be testing some of the critical or crucial functions of your application. That's the reason why smoke testing is quite lesser. It is also called as build verification test or BVT because every single time, well, there is going to be a software build coming up from developer, from a CI CD pipeline or any other means, you will be testing the application immediately to test if the application is ready for further testing. So here the software build is nothing but the software versions because you may be working in a company where there are going to be like multiple developers and they will be checking in the code. I mean, the check-in code concept is something new if you have not heard about. It is basically like every developers write the code in their machine uh, and they will all be committing the code, not storing the code in the local machine because what happens if the machine just destroys by, by a crash or probably like a cloud strike or problem that we just got recently, right? Like if there is some of the issue which happens in the local machine, your machine is completely gone. So it's always a best practice that every single time a developer write a code, they check in the code, which means they are committing the code into a centralized repository, which they call it as uh, like a uh, like a CI CD, which we call it as like a continuous uh, integration system, which can be a Git or some other uh, way. Just don't worry about it. Just think uh, that developers are committing all the code into a centralized repository. And that centralized repository will also do quite a lot of operation like compiling your applications and creating an uh, executable file of your application. We call that as a build because you can use that executable file to run in your local machine and then you can see how the application works. So all these executable file, we call it a software build. And that is what is the software build all about. So in smoke testing, once you get a software build from an application, you start testing the application to see if a basic crucial functionality works. For instance, login operation, if that works once the application opens or not. And similarly, once you go and click the settings menu, the settings window comes up or not. And once you quit the application, whether the application closes or not, or it just keeps running in the background, 
or once you try to refresh the page, whether it crashes the entire application, that's a crucial part as well, right? Like, so you just have to ensure that you test all those functionality in the smoke testing. So that's what is all this smoke testing is about. This is one of the testing type that we have got. And there is one more testing, which is a big brother, really. We call it as regression testing. So regression testing is also a type of testing, but in here, we don't just cover the crucial component of the application, but we also test the recent changes in application which would have affected the existing functionality due to the code change by one of the developer. As I told you, there may be like multiple developers working in one of the project. And you may have a situation where you will be testing one of the functionality of your application and another developer has introduced a new change in some other component, but even though it is not related to the functionality that you are testing, sometimes there are chances that the change which was introduced by some other developer will affect your testing. So it is important that every single time while you test the application, while there is a new build, you also test not only the new feature, but also the functionalities that you have already tested. Well, regression testing is like, even though you test specific functionality of your application, because of a developer's code change, you will also be testing the affected functionality as well. So that is what is all about this regression testing. And this is where automation testing comes in very, very handy. So as there may be hundreds and thousands of scenarios needed to be tested for any given software, it becomes so hard for a manual test engineer to keep track of all the changes went on specific app build and the testing them again and again will be like a nightmare for the test engineers. So you just think about this, like you're working for a banking domain or let's say you're working for a larger enterprise application. And there are going to be like uh, quite a lot of changes happens every single build. And you have got a release of the application every fortnightly or every weekly. And you have to execute the same test every single time. I mean, first time while you join the company, you may be in a very good position to test the application. But what if you're going to be doing the exact same thing every single week? And then you also uh, executing like a piled up scenarios, like there is a new scenario or new features being added and you'll be writing new scenario every single time for those new features. And then you also have to test those scenarios as well. Then you'll be just ending up executing the scenarios again and again. And because of the nature of the human being, we also tend to incline toward taking shortcuts to see if the application just works in that area and you think that that area is will be fine and you just keep on executing the other scenarios. But what if the area that you just think that it is fine will have an issue, then you will just encounter that issue and you will miss the bug that you would have already captured. So that is the problem with the manual testing. But in the automation testing, you always try to execute the test based on whatever that you have written in the scenario. And every single time it just executes instantly based on how you write the scenarios. It just runs the test fastly and then it reduces the number of times that you spend for running the same test again and again. Your automation testing is gonna take care of that and it is going to run everything for you. So that is the power of the automation testing. So automation testing not only reduces the number of time that you spend on running the test, but it also increased the productivity of a software test engineer because the software test engineer can focus on testing other areas, which is not automated, for instance, and which is a new feature, uh, which you have to take more closer look on and let the automation testing to execute the legacy features that is already there in place to be tested in another machine or in a CI CD pipeline so that you see that the the productivity just keeps increasing tremendously. And what if there are like three or four test engineers working in your team and three of them are fully focused on writing test scenarios for automation and one test engineer, including all these three, is part of the quality process where they try to ensure that the new features are even tested. You see that you all will be like, there are four test engineers right now while every build comes in and the, let's say there are 500 scenarios and 400 scenarios are 
automated and it's running in the pipeline or in the in other any other mean and just there are 100 scenario that you four test engineers have to test it'll be just divided as 25 each and you guys will be testing them and not only just like scenarios that you'll be executing but see the amount of work separation that happens and the number of hours that you spent just reduces tremendously to be honest in my personal experience i have seen this in many company i have implemented automation testing we reduce quite a lot of time by using automation testing and it really gives you a sigh of relief that you know what you have did the automation testing and you don't really have to keep on ensuring that the product is going to work or not because your automation testing if it is written correctly if it is verified correctly you don't even have to think about like second thought about the quality of that particular piece that is being tested by automation it is going to just work fine without any problem that is the power of automation testing and that's why automation testing comes in very very handy during these situations well as that said another question because we have seen some of the testing concepts are these the only testing concepts that we have to worry about while learning software testing? Well, there are many different testing types and testing uh, testing concepts available. So I have not covered every single thing in this particular video, but I would recommend you to please go ahead and learn some of the testing concept if you are interested in uh, learning the testing because testing is really, as I told you, it's an art where you can learn many different concepts and terminologies to, uh, to identify how you can uh, test the application and also you can understand how the system works and how what is the better way for you to ensure that the quality of the application can be improved and every single time you can release a quality product so it is always important that you understand that as well well as that said now we are going to get into the automation testing but the first question naturally comes is what do we need to learn for automation testing because you might have already heard that if you're going to be getting into automation testing, there are many different languages available and there are many tools available, like many testing tools available. So which testing tool to learn and which language to learn before we get into automation testing? Well, for automation testing, there are many different tools available. I'm, I agree on that. And there are many languages out there as well. But for any beginner who is getting into software testing, I always highly recommend them to learn any one of the programming language in much, much stronger fashion. It could be Java or it could be C Sharp. It could be JavaScript, doesn't matter. You have to learn at least one programming language in a very, very stronger way. Because if you learn Java, you also are pretty close to learn C Sharp because both of these programming languages are compiled programming languages. They are object oriented and they try to be pretty close to each other because they don't want to mess up with the developers because they also need to ensure that the developers from one language also transition to another language without any problem so that it keeps their business up and running like Microsoft and Sun Microsystem and then Oracle by the, by the way right so that's how they try to keep the language uh, in sync with each other and that's the reason why I always say to the tester is that you just try to learn one language like C sharp or Java you then will be fine in automating the application using these languages while I say automating the application with these languages you need to also learn any one of the automation testing tool and I would say Selenium is one of the best tool for you to learn and get started with. Because while I started using Selenium like 12 years before, while Selenium was even an in alpha stage, like Selenium web driver was in alpha stage, by then the famous tool was QTP uh, or otherwise called as UFT at the moment. And these tools are like uh, in a monopoly of having only best automation testing tools uh, next to the test complete. And there was no other testing tool available in the market by then, uh, which is open source, which is free to use, and also which is uh, easy to use. And the one tool which changed the landscape of automation testing for its entirety is for sure Selenium. I would say, please go ahead and learn Selenium as one of the best testing tool. It is going to give you almost everything that you need to know for automating an application. 
And based on Selenium, you can then learn about Playwright or Cypress or any other modern testing tool. It just works fine and it is going to be replicating pretty much exactly like Selenium. And as I told you, as C Sharp and Java are pretty close to each other, Selenium and the rest of the tools will try to keep up with as close as possible with Selenium because they don't want to mess up with the test engineers as well because they want to streamline the process. And the way the testers use the tools, they wanted to uh, avoid the way they just messed up each other. So that's the reason why they try to keep things as similar as possible. So try to learn one programming language. It can be C Sharp or Java or JavaScript and learn only one testing tool like Selenium in this case you will be fine with automation testing. So that is the way that you have to get into the automation testing field. And I hope that makes sense. Well, as that said, this is the first introduction and getting started for you with testing and with the testing tools and some of the testing concepts. Starting our next video, we will see how we can get our environment ready, like our machine ready to install the Java as well as the JDK and SDK and the IDE, which is the place where you're gonna be typing the code and we'll start working with the coding the language itself. And then we'll start to learn about the Java language itself in a much, much better fashion. But for now, you are already set from where you have to start and where you're going to head towards. Hope you got the idea. Thank you so much for watching this video and catch you in the next one. Until then, take care.